Narandasya Gyananjana Shalakaya Chaksur Militanyena Tasmai Shri Gurave Namaha Namah Om Vishnu Padaya Krishna Pristaya Bhutale Srimati Bhakti Vedanta Swaminiti Namane Namaste Sarasati Devi Gauravani Precharine Nirvishesha Shunyavadi Paschacha Desatarine Jaya Shri Krishna Chaitanya Prabhu Nityananda Shri Advaita Gadadhar Shri Vasadi Gaur Bhaktavinda Hare Krishna Hare Krishna 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 Hare 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 Rama Hare Rama 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 Hare Hare <coughs> So welcome all the devotees to our Ishopanishad course. Oh, wait, I'll put my video on for a little while. So I hope all the devotees are well Sunday here. So the last class we were speaking about well who remembers what we were speaking on? Someone can tell me what we discussed in the last class? Mantra 9 Mantra 9 was describing Everybody hear me okay? Yes, Maharaj. 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 Oh, Vidya, Navidya, Maharaj. Oh, Vidya, Navidya. Okay. Two, ki two kinds of knowledge, two kinds of education. Okay. So, did, did you get a good education? What kind of education did you get? Vidya or Avidya? <laughs> Maybe most of us, we, lo we got a lot of avidya. <laughs> and very, very less vidya. vidya. The vidya really came only once we became devotees. The real education became, it, it began after we became devotees, after we met Krishna consciousness. But before coming to Krishna consciousness, there was no real education. So Vidya and Avidya, Ishopanishad warns that, uh, that material knowledge is material, is it a good thing for people to be educated? Kundalata, is it good for people to get this education in Avidya? Yes, Maharaj, but this Avidya knowledge is, is a wrong teaching. Okay. The problem is... So Avidya is ignorance and Vidya is a knowledge that we teaching, wrong teaching. Yeah. People are cultivating... So it's a dangerous, it's a dangerous this Vidya. Because... Yeah. Why? The, the real knowledge of the Vedas, we are not uh, getting. Yeah, we learned about two ta two kinds of people who misuse that education, right? There were two kinds of people described. Yes. Do you remember that? Karmis and Yanis. Oh yeah, they're all engaged in what? The karmi, the jnani, and the yogi. Yes. Karmi is engaged in footage work. Mm -hmm. And the jnani? Speculative knowledge, man. Speculative knowledge. They're all trying to get sense gratification, right? The karmi, yes. the jnani, and the yogi. It's all different forms of sense gratification. And the result is, none of them are peaceful. 
in the Chaitanya Charitamrita is described, Bhukti Mukti Siddhikami Sakale Ashanta, Krishna Bhakti Niskam Sa Ishashanta. So the Karmi, he wants Bhukti, material enjoyment. The Gyani wants Mukti, and the Yogi wants Siddhi. So Bhukti Mukti Siddhi Kami Sakale Ashanta. It's all material desire. The result is they're not peaceful. They don't get peace of mind because they just have material desires. Krishna Bhakti Niskam Sa Isha Shanta. Only the devotee who wants Krishna Bhakti, he's actually peaceful. So we discuss like that. Right? And we heard about. Uh, Vedavada Rata, do you remember who, who, who's a Vedavada Rata? They are mistaken, mistaken educators, Maharaj. Yeah, they, they, they think they know the Vedas, but they don't know the purpose behind the Vedas. They quote the Vedas, but they don't know the purpose behind the Vedas. Right? What is the purpose behind the Vedas? To know Krishna. Right. Krishna says in the Bhagavad Gita, by all the Vedas I am to be known. I am the author. I am the compiler of the Vedas. So by all the Vedas, he's to be, the purpose of the Vedas is to know Krishna. But what do the Veda Vadarata people want? Why are they studying the Vedas? What are they trying to achieve? They are fascinated by such fruitive activities, fruitive results. Yeah. Them heaven. Yes, they are thinking about going to heaven, about enjoying material life in the heavenly planets, long life, opulence, just some kind of sense gratification. And then there's another kind of person called Maya Aparita Jnana. Do you know the meaning of Maya Aparita Jnana? Knowledge stolen by illusion. Yes, knowledge stolen by illusion. One whose knowledge is stolen by illusion. So, can you tell me what they do? Thinking, that, thinking themselves are God. Yeah, they're thinking they're God, right? So, what, what do they try to do? Now that I'm God, what are you going to do? Will and everyone have to surrender for me too. Now they think, now I'm God, now I will enjoy. It's all for me to enjoy. Yes. Everything is mine. It's all mine. They're all for me to enjoy. Like Haranyakashipu. You know, like that. They try to compete with God. They want to become the God, make themselves God. So these two kinds of people, they're two kinds of people who have been miseducated. They have some knowledge, but it's all wrong. They've got everything wrong. They didn't learn the right way. So it's important for us to uh, understand what is the real message of the scriptures. How, how can we get the real message of the scriptures? To follow the previous acharyas. Yes, we have, to, we have to hear from the acharyas. We have to hear through the disciplic succession. Then we can understand what is really there in the scriptures. That is the fact. Okay. Very good. Okay, so we're, we're going to, let me see, I, there's a PowerPoint, I'll just show you some of this, let me put the PowerPoint on here. Yeah.
Can everyone say okay? Yes, ma'am. Yes, ma'am. Okay, you're seeing all right. Yeah. Okay. Good. Let's see. Okay, we're going to see the overview of the Ishopanishad. Sec section 1, mantras 1 to 3. Do you remember what we studied there? Mantra 1 to 3, we were learning. Yeah. Everything animate and inanimate that is within the universe is controlled and owned by the Lord. Yes, what's the Sanskrit word for that? Isavashyam idam sarvam. Yes, the Ishyavashya, Ishyavashya society, right? So mantras yes. 1 to 3 described about the proprietorship and the laws of God. Who is the proprietor? What, what was the law of God? What laws is that? Can you tell me? Laws of God, I think I'll try Maharaj, is to follow the Vedas. Yeah, but what's particularly mentioned in mantras 1 to 3? What's, what's being, what was stated there? Don't take more than required. Yes, right. Thank you. Don't take more than your quota, right? Just, quota, yes, just take what you require. Don't take more. Remember the example Prabhupada gives about a bag of rice in the street. If there's a bag of rice in the street, the bird will come. It will take a few grains. Even the, the mice may come, they'll take a few grains. But the man will come to take the whole bag, <laughs> right? That's the human nature. We always want to take more. We're always trying to accumulate everything. We think it's all for my enjoyment. So Mantra 3 was describing like that. Ultimately everything belongs to God and we should just take what we need. So then Section 2. Mantras 4 to 8. Do you remember what was described there? Anyone? Mantra 4 to Mantra 8. They told us about the vision of the Mahabhagavata. Remember, we talked about what's the vision of the Mahabhagavata? How do they see everything? All his parts can do the work of the other parts. No, no, no. That's not the vision of the Mahabharata. That's the omnipotency of the Supreme Lord. Yeah. But what is the vision of the Mahabhagavata? How does he see everything? He sees everything equally. Equally. Yeah. My hearing from Otaki. What is this Sanskrit word, remember? Yes, ekat vam anupashyata. That he sees all living entities in quality, one with the Lord. One who sees all living entities in quality, one with the Lord, becomes a true knower of things. So what can be illusion or anxiety for him? Not cannot be, because he sees everyone. He sees all the every all living entities in quality, one with the Lord. Yeah, he also, he, and he also knows about God. He also knows about the Supreme Lord. He knows about his qualities, how he is 
you know, as you said, he, he's unembodied, right? Unembodied meaning? Cannot hear you. Oh, you've got a problem with your mic. He doesn't have a material body, right. He has a spiritual body. He has a body but it's not material, it's not like ours. What's the difference between his body and our body? Not embodied. Krishna's mind, body and everything are the same. Right. His mind and soul and body, it's all spiritual and so it's all the, it's the same. We have a material body, material mind and spirit, spiritual soul, different. So he's unembodied, he's, he's uh, omnipotent, his senses can perform the work of the other senses. He's omniscient, omniscient, meaning he knows everything because he's everywhere, he's in the hearts of all living entities. And then he is Shudam apapa vidam, right? What was that? Shudam apapa vidam. What does it mean? Shudam is antiseptic. Yes. Uh, apapa vidam is a prophylactic. Uh, sin cannot touch. Yes. They are prophylactic, cannot be contaminated, right? But even though he may do some things which appear to be, oh, we may think, oh, he did like, oh, that's not, but he doesn't get contaminated, right? Krishna stole the butter, yes. but Krishna is not going to get karma for that. And Krishna did some tricks, you know, he, he left the battlefield, he was Ranchur, he left the battlefield, but for Krishna, it's not a problem. We build a temple to Krishna to glorify him as Ranchur. And Krishna danced Rasa Leela with the gopis, but it's not his, it's not Maya. It's, this is Krishna's Leela, Krishna's satisfaction for Krishna's pleasure. It's the highest spiritual activity. And so he's antiseptic, he purifies the bad things, and he's prophylactic, he doesn't, can't be contaminated. And he's without veins, right? That's another point about the Lord. He has no veins in his body, his body's spiritual, doesn't need veins. So he doesn't have big muscles, <laughs> he doesn't need big muscles to kill the demons or to lift Govardhan Hill. He can do it all with his spiritual body, okay? So we heard like that about the Lord and then we, we went on to the next section, this mantra is 9 to 14, right? We covered mantra 9 in the last class and we're going to cover 10 today like that and it's titled The Absolute and the Relative. Absolute means, well that's Krishna, Krishna is the Absolute. And relative, we are, that's us, we are the relative. We're going to hear about the relationship between us and Krishna in terms of, first of all, knowledge. We're doing text 10 today, 9, 10, 11 in terms of knowledge, and then 12, 13, 14 in terms of worship. So this will be covered later. We'll look at in 12 to 14. We'll hear about the impersonalists and the demigod worshippers, like that. Then text 14, uh, text 4, section 4 rather, mantras 15 to 18 to the end, then we'll cover about prayer at the time of death. So those are the four sections here in the Ishopanishad. Okay, mantra 9 to 14 in terms of knowledge. Mantra 9, we, we did this verse. 
andantamaha pravishanti, andam meaning darkness and tamaha, ignorance. So there's two kinds of darkness, right? One is where there's no light and the other darkness is due to ignorance. So darkest region of ignorance is described here. Ye vidya, vidyam upasate, this is the avidya. They worship, they are engaged in the so-called culture of knowledge, so-called knowledge, not real knowledge. From the ninth mantra, modern civilization has advanced considerably. Someone can read Ram Gopinath Prabhu? Modern civilization has advanced considerably in the field of mass education, but the result is that people are more unhappy than ever before because of the stress placed on the material advancement to the exclusion of the most important part of life, the spiritual aspect. Go ahead. The advancement of learning by a godless people is as dangerous as a valuable jewel on the hood of a cobra. A cobra decorated with a valuable jewel is more dangerous, dangerous than one not decorated. Hmm. It's true, isn't it? The jewel makes, jewel makes it attractive. So, so here's the... Godless, go ahead. A godless civilization directed toward the so-called advancement of education is more dangerous than a civilization in which the masses of people are less educated. How would you present this statement to a modern audience? Now modern audiences, they are very attached to education. They consider education very important. You all know in Malaysia how much money you all spend for education and you take loans from the bank to send your children to foreign countries just to get more education. So education is very important. People, they, they consider that, well, if you don't have a good education, it's very difficult for life. You won't get a good job. You won't be, you won't be able to do well in life. <laughs> right? We have that kind of understanding. So how will we try to present, to make this point clear to people? that education is dangerous, more dangerous. It's better that people are not educated than to have them educated, so-called educated. Any ideas? The so-called advancement of education. Gurudev, there is an answer. Okay. People, the people, the tendency of people is to become more self-reliant and less dependent on the Lord. Okay. But the problem is the modern audience are probably not, may not be very pious or religious. <laughs> and so they may think that, oh, dependent on the Lord, you know, you know you know, why, why you talk like this, you know? You know, you, we just, just want to get a job, just want to make some money, we just want to live. You know, what's it got to do with God? You know, religion, that's something on Sunday. Go to church for an hour or go to temple one night a week or something. <laughs> what would you say? 
we could try and explain Gurudev that, you know, uh, it's not that become religious means you don't do anything. You have to do the work. You have to put the effort. You have to use the energy that the body has. But beyond that, of course, you need the Lord's mercy. For that aspect, you also need to depend on the Lord. And should things not be achievable despite of the trial, don't become so, so, don't feel so miserable that you feel like doing all negative things or think negative. Just give it another try in life. But don't put a full stop to life over there. So we can make them try to look at things positively instead of negative for everything. Oh. Well, I think that's colored, colored by your own opinions. May not be so banked up with everybody's experience. But generally we do see that the so-called advancement of education can be a dangerous thing that people certainly forget about the purpose of life. They forget that they have a material body. They forget the responsibility of the human life. So we try to encourage people to inquire more, to understand more the nature of the material world. And we see also how the university educational institutes, the, 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 the atmosphere in such places is not really the highest uh, cultural environment. That people are often addicted to sinful activities there. Prabhupada described the universities, in the, in the USA at least, he said they're like a slaughterhouse. That young people go there, they may have good qualities, but they'll lose them in the course of time. Just spend a few years in the university, just being around the campus there, and they'll lose all their good qualities very quickly in the university. So that's what happens. That so-called education, that we ha people haven't been educated properly in culture, morality, to understand, to, to control the mind and senses. They don't know what is proper behavior even. So we try to encourage people to understand these things, that people have to be trained, they have to have some uh, opportunity to cultivate higher consciousness, a, a greater awareness of life. And it begins with controlling the mind and senses. Okay, we, I don't want to spend too much time with that, but uh, we'll come back to it another time. We'll come, now I want to go to the text. Is everyone able to see the text here? Yes, Maharaj. Okay. okay, let's, because we have to, this is text number 10. We'll read the mantra. Who's going to chant the Sanskrit for us? The Krishna Gurudev. Yes. Sachinanda, okay. Yeah. Go ahead. Anya. Anya Deva Hor Vidyaya Anya Deva Hor Vidyaya Yena stad vichaksha Okay, someone else like to chant? Anya deva hor vidyaya Anya deva hor vidyaya Anya deva hor vidyaya Anya 
Okay, one more. Okay, we won't bother then. Go ahead, read the translation, Sachinandan. The wise have explained that one resource is derived from the culture of knowledge and that a different resource is obtained from the culture of missiles. Okay, go ahead. As, the, as advised in chapter 13 of the Bhagavad Gita, text 8 to 12, one should culture knowledge in the following way. One should become a perfect gentleman and learn to give proper respect to others. One should not pose himself as the religionist simply for the name and fame. Number three, one should not become a source of anxiety to others by the actions of his body, by the thoughts of his mind, or by his words. Number four, one should learn to avoid duplicity in his dealings with others. So that's number five. What? One should learn forbearance even in the face of provocation from others. Number five, one should learn to avoid duplicity in his dealings with others. Number six, one should research a bona fide spiritual master who can lead him gradually to the stage of spiritual realization and one must submit himself to such a spiritual master, render service and ask relevant questions. Number seven, in order to approach the platform of self-realization, one must follow the regulative principles and join in several uh, in the revealed scriptures. Number eight, one must be fixed in the tenets of the revealed scriptures. One should be one should completely refrain from practices which are detrimental to the interest of self-realization. Number 10. One should not accept more than he requires for the maintenance of his of the body. Number 11. One should not falsely identify himself with the gross material body, nor should one consider those who are related to his body to be his own. Number 12. One should always remember that as long as he has a material body, he must face the miseries of repeated birth, old age, disease and death. There is no use in making plans to get rid of these miseries of material body. The best course is to find out the means by which one may regain his spiritual identity. Number 13. One should not be attached to more than the necessities of life required for spiritual advancement. Number 14. One should not be more attached to wife, children and home than the rebel scriptures ordain. Number 15. One should not be happy or distressed over this desirable and undesirable knowing that such feelings are just created by the mind. Number 16. One should become an unalloyed devotee of the personality of Godhead Sri Krishna and serve him with rapt attention. Number 17. One should develop a liking for residence in in a secluded place with a calm, calm and quiet atmosphere favorable for spiritual culture. And one should avoid congested places where non-devotees are non-devotees congregate. Number 18. One should become a scientist of philosopher and conduct research into spiritual knowledge, recognizing that spiritual knowledge is permanent, whereas material knowledge ends with the death of the body. Go ahead. These 18 combine to form a gradual process by which real knowledge can be developed. Except for these, all 
other methods are considered to be the category of nisans sela prakti vinod takur a great acharya maintain all forms of material knowledge and merely external features of the illusory energy and that by culturing them one becomes no better than an ass this same principle is found there in sri upo iso upanishad by advancement of material knowledge modern man is simply being converted into an ass some materialistic politicians in spiritual guys decry the present system of cultivated civilization as satanic but unfortunately they do not care about the culture of real knowledge as it is described in the bhagavad gita thus they cannot change the satanic situation okay thank you all right let's have a look at this shrila prabhupada is quoted from bhagavad gita from bhagavad gita in the 13th chapter right the, uh, these are the actually there's 20 items there in the bhagavad gita but here in the ishopanishad in this purport prabhupada is listed it as 18 You may know the verse. It begins with "Amanitvam adambitvam, Amanitvam adambitvam, Amanitvam humility and adambitvam pridelessness." So you can see Prabhupada has put it here in simple language. He said, "One should become a perfect gentleman and learn to give proper respect to others," meaning humility and pridelessness. So what is being described here you know it's it's a little puzzling in the beginning because you you think 18 items of knowledge but what's described here is the process of knowledge the pros you follow this process and you awaken knowledge we want to get good knowledge you have to follow this process you have to cultivate these kind of qualities real education begins with humility but people today are not very humble especially when you go to university you go into college or something become very proud and you think oh i'm very great i've got into college i've got in i'm a student you know we're students but we're students of avidya so this 18 items are listed here you can see uh one of them was that search out a bona fide spiritual master very important you need to have a spiritual master Every, who needs a spiritual master everyone we all need to get a spiritual master our own prabhupad he took a spiritual master lord chaitanya took a spiritual master krishna also had a spiritual master right who was krishna's guru sandipani muni yeah and who was lord chaitanya's guru ishwarapuri ishwarapuri right okay so everyone needs to have a guru you have to get trained we have to submit ourselves to the render service ask relevant questions important this is described in the bhagavad gita right i try to learn the truth by approaching a spiritual master inquire from him submissively don't just challenge and argue with him but inquire and inquire relevant questions about krishna consciousness about making spiritual advancement this is important So this kind of principle this is the process of knowledge you follow this kind of process you get a very good education follow the regulative principles refrain from things which are not good don't lie and steal and cheat don't accept more than we require again to maintain the body minimize the demands of the body remember also we have a material body the miseries are going to be there 
We're not going to be able to escape old age, disease, death. We don't like it, but we can't do anything about it. I remember Prabhupada saying about it, Prabhupada used to tell, he said, we don't like old age, but we cannot avoid it. You have to make the best of it. So it's, don't, it's, it's no use to make plans to get rid of these miseries. We try to avoid them. Of course, we can avoid them. The best way is to go to the spiritual world. Get out by going to the spiritual world. But not in the material world, you cannot avoid them. Okay. Should not be attached to more than the necessity. Again, minimize the bodily demands. Number 16, very important. One should become an unalloyed devotee of the personality of Godhead Sri Krishna and serve him with rapt attention. That is the best education. This is part of the process of knowledge. Become a pure devotee. So all of these other qualities are no use unless, one are, unless we actually become a devotee. We have to be a devotee. That's very important. If we're not devotees, then all of these things, they're just material qualities. So the most important thing to be a devotee and to serve Krishna. Okay, so Srila Bhaktivinoda Thakur was quoted. It says, all forms of material knowledge are external features of illusory energy. Culturing them, one becomes no better than an ass. We become an ass. Why? Because we're just cultivating these material qualities. The things in relation, all the forms of material knowledge, they're just temporary. They're things in relation to the body to satisfy our senses. So this is, it's just mundane, useless knowledge. So if we're interested in them, that is like the same as the ass, the donkey, the ass, the foolish animal. They also want to eat, they want to sleep, they want to mate, they want to defend. That's the, the thinking of the foolish animal. So if we're also in that consciousness, we cultivate material knowledge, then there's no difference between us and the ass. We may say, oh no, my eating is much better. I eat, I sit at a nice table and I eat and I have my plate and so on. But it's the same thing, the same business. You take food, you put it in the mouth, you satisfy the belly. The ass is doing the same thing. The dog is doing the same thing, no difference. So material knowledge, modern man is simply converted into an ass, into an animal. We have to be very careful, we don't want to become animals. So Prabhupada says some politicians, they pretend that they're actually politicians but they look, they put on the spiritual guise. In other words, they, they put on a, you know, they may dress in saffron cloth, they may have long hair and put on tea like and, and they do different things like to make themselves look spiritual, you know, to get the support of the people. And so they, they put on that, that front to impress people. But actually, what the, the, their, their knowledge is also material and their solution to the problems is also material, it's also useless. So they cannot change and Prabhupada calls it satanic situation. Satanic means the terrible, horrible, you know, the demoniac, demoniac situation. Okay. So we'll go ahead. Somebody else could read in the modern society. Hare Krishna Maharaj. Yes, Hare Krishna. Uh, 
okay. Uh, in the modern society, even a boy thinks himself self self sufficient and pays no respect to elderly men due to the wrong type of education being imparted in our universities. Boys all over the world are giving their giving their elders headaches. Thus, Sri Isopanishad very strongly wants that the culture of nest science is different from that or that of the knowledge. Universities are so to speak centers of nest science only. Consequently, scientists are busy discovering uh, lethal weapons to wipe out the existence of other countries. University students today are not given instructions in the regulatory principles of Brahmacharya, celibate, celibate student life, nor do they have any faith in any scriptural injunctions. Religious principles are taught for the sake of name and fame only and not for the sake of practical action. Thus, there is, there is animosity not only in the social and political fields, but in the field of re religion as well. Okay. Yes. So, the Ishopanishad is telling us the culture of nations the culture of this uh, ignorance, this material knowledge is different from real knowledge, obviously. If we want to cultivate spiritual knowledge, it's very different from this uh, mundane material knowledge. So Prabhupada talks about the effect of this wrong, wrong kind of education, because what the universities, they're training all the people to become sudras, right? They want them all to become sudras, train them to be engineers, train them to be accountants, train them to be uh, some kind of scientist. It's all sudra work, just sudras. And they, they just go and work in the big corporation, multinational corporation. You're just a big sudra. You don't use your intelligence very much. You just sit there in the big company there, sit in front of the computer and do some work, write letters to people and so on. It's all culture of avidya, the bodily conception of life. So the Ishopanishad is warning us that we have to cultivate real knowledge. We have to understand our real identity. The material knowledge just makes people more ignorant. So scientists, what are they doing? They're making weapons to, to blow up another country, to destroy, to end the lives of people. They're working very hard on all these things, making weapons, making bombs and sophisticated guns and so on. They can't do anything to save the lives of people, they can only do things to end the life. This is how they use their knowledge. And just like just now, we have the virus. They cannot find any cure, they cannot do anything to stop it, but they can, they can make bombs and guns. This is a good business, right? They think they can make bombs, they can sell them to other countries. And then they sell them and the people use them to shoot and kill each other. So this is what they do with their, this is their so-called knowledge. The budget of so many countries in the world, the major portion of the budget goes on defense. That they buy weapons, they buy guns, they buy bombs, they buy these airplanes, they fight each other. And then university students, Prabhupada talks how you could never teach them about brahmacharya. Teach them about brahmacharya, student life. Whoa. They would be very, they'd laugh at you, they'd throw you out. One devotee was telling me how they began teaching yoga in the university in India. They wanted to have a course in yoga because they saw yoga getting popular 
And so they invited one yogi to come to the university to teach the students. So the yogi would come and he would come in yogi dress, he'd come in dhoti and so on. And they told him, what? No, you cannot come like this. You have to, you have to dress like us. And the yogi, he would be a vegetarian and he would tell the students, you have to be vegetarian. And the school, all, they complain, the students all complain to the school and say, we cannot be vegetarian. And they told the teacher, you cannot teach them to be vegetarian. You have to let them eat what they want to eat. They wouldn't, the university wouldn't allow the yogi to teach them properly, the real process. You know, to practice brahmacharya also, it's a part of the yoga system. But the students say, oh, no, we're not going to do that. Well, we want to have, we want to have sex, we want to enjoy, we want all our, we want to have freedom. They taught like this, you see. And so people, the young students, they, they didn't want to learn. They didn't want proper teaching, didn't want proper education. When Bhaktisiddhanta Sarasati, Prabhupada's guru, when he was a young man, when he was a teenager, he was in the university, he formed a brahmachari society and he was so powerful, he was such a powerful personality, he got many young men to join. But that was a long time ago, it's about a hundred years ago now. Things are really different now. To get young men now to practice brahmacharya, it's, it's very difficult, very rare. And even the, the people, the parents, they don't want it. They say, they, oh, no, 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 we don't want our son to be a brahmachari. Of course, they can get married after some time, but it's a good training. You see, if one is trained as a brahmachari, then they'll make a good householder. If one is not trained, then they won't, make, they won't be very successful in their family life. So the brahmachari training is very important to help to make men good husbands so that they can produce good children. But people don't know these things, they don't know the science. So this is the modern civilization, such a mess, such a failure. And that's why we have all the problems which are here today. Because we've done everything wrong. <laughs> okay? So we'll go ahead. Ne who's going to read next? Nationalism? Who's here? Nantini, can you read today? Nationalism has developed in different parts of the world due to the cultivation of nations by the general people. No one considered that this tiny earth is a just, just a lump of matter floating in immeasurable space along with many other lumps. In comparison to the vastness of space, these material lumps are like dust particles in the air. Because God has kindly made these lumps of matter complete in themselves, they are perfectly equipped with all necessities for floating in space. The drivers of our spaceship may be very proud of their achievements, but they do not consider the supreme driver of these greater, more gigantic spaceships called planets. <laughs> okay, so Prabhupada is talking about nationalism. We're proud of our country. Well, it's good, but there's so many other countries where it's very insignificant. And these countries, these designations, you know, they're very temporary. If you look back 200 years ago or even 100 years ago, it was different. There was no Malaysia. There was no, you know, it's all different. So all of this nationalism, this is a body, temporary knowledge. We're very insignificant in the universe. Go ahead, Nantini, you can read more. These are innumerable suns and innumerable planetary systems also. As infinite thimal stars and passes of the Supreme Lord, we small creatures are trying to dominate these unlimited planets. 
Thus, we take repeated birth and death and are generally frustrated by old age and disease. The span of human life is scheduled for about 100 years, although it is gradually decreasing to 20 or 30 years. Thanks to the culture of Nisai, befooled men have created their own nations within this planet in order to grasp self-enjoyment more effectively for these few years. Such foolish people draw up various plans to render national demarcations perfectly, a task that is totally impossible. Yet for this purpose, each and every nation has become a source of anxiety for others. More than 50% of a nation's energy is devoted to defense measures and thus spoiled. No one cares for the cultivation of real knowledge, yet people are falsely proud of being advanced in both material and spiritual knowledge. Okay, thank you. So Srila Prabhupada is writing here about the situation. Prabhupada wrote this a long time ago, of course. This was like even before Prabhupada wrote these purports, even before he went to America. He had published it in India before he gone to America. He wrote them for articles in his Back to Godhead magazine. But it's the same things today. The same things are going on today. The wars between one country and another country, they argue with each other. We saw there was Russia and Ukraine were having an argument. And sometimes it's India and China are having an argument. And sometimes even within the country, you get one part of the country want to break away from the other part of the country. <laughs> you know, it's all bodily consciousness. And we're wasting all of our time with these different thoughts. We're not seeing the real problem of life. Okay, go ahead. Who have we got to read? Who hasn't read yet today? Somebody who didn't read? Kundalata. Yes, Maharaj. Sri Isha Upanishad warns us of this faulty type of education and the Bhagavad Gita give instruction as to the development of real knowledge. This mantra states that the instruction of the Vidya knowledge must be acquired from Adira. Adira is one who is not disturbed by material illusion. No one can be undisturbed unless he is perfectly spiritualized, realized, at which time one neither anchors no laminin from any anything. Adira realized that the material body and minds he has acquired by pain through material association are but foreign element. Therefore, he simply make the best use of a bad bargain. Okay, so Prabhupada is talking about. Prabhupada is telling us where we have to get this knowledge from. Somebody's microphone is giving a lot of trouble. So we have to get the vidya. The re if we want to get vidya, you have to get it from the right person. Not just somebody who's a professor in the university. Not just somebody who's got a PhD. That's not enough. You know, some of these scientists and big scholars and so on, they're very degraded people. They're often very sinful. They don't control their mind and senses. Many of them are very nasty and very big atheists. Just like there's a one man in England, Stephen Hawkins. He's a big scientist, a big name in science. He's very atheistic, very sinful. And he's in a wheelchair, he can hardly speak, he has a machine to help him speak. But he got married to another woman, he got married, he threw, got rid of his wife and married a, his nurse. And, oh, you know, very uncontrolled senses. So we want to get spiritual knowledge, you have to get it from a qualified person and the qualification is he should be dira. You know this word in the Bhagavad Gita? Dhirastatra namuyati. 
मद्रास पर्शस्तु कौन्ति आस्तोष न सुकदुक आगमा पाये नुनिचस Oh no, that's times the tikshas for Bharata. Dira, where is it mentioned? Dira? Devi no sin yata devi. Yes, right. Good. Go ahead. Tell me the verse. I will try, Maharaj. Devi no sin yata devi. Devi no sin yata devi. Translation? You know? I will tell Maharaj, as the embodied soul continuously passes from this body from boyhood to youthhood to old age, similarly the body at the time of death passes into another uh, similarly the soul at the time of death passes into another body. A sober person is not divided by such a change. Right. So Dira is a sober person, right? He's sober. The, the, he's, he's not drunk. He's not intoxicated. He's not illusioned. He's not disturbed by the material illusion, Prabhupada says. So this is a dira. He's, he's, he has spiritual vision. He's understood the nature of the material world and he's not bewildered by it. So he doesn't have material desires, he does not hanker, he's not looking to get something and he's not lamenting about the past. You know material world people are like that, they have big plans what they want to get and they lament about the past. But the dira, person who is dira, he's okay, he's, he's fixed. He has realized the nature of the material body. He said, Prabhupada said, he has acquired the body by chance through material association. They're foreign elements. He simply makes the best use of a bad bargain. You know, sometimes you go shopping and you buy something, you think, oh, it's so cheap, I'm going to buy it. And you buy it and then you find out, oh, it's a copy, it doesn't work very good and you have a lot of… Anyway, you, ha you bought it, so you have to make the best use of it. It's a bad bargain, but you have, to, you have to use it. So same way the material body is like that. We've got a material body. It gives us a lot of trouble. We get so many problems, problems of the mind, problems of the body, problems, so many difficulties coming with the body. So we have to tolerate it, make the, just try to use it while we're here in this material world. Because we know we're not here forever, so use it while we have it now. We, difficult to get, we'll get another one in course of time, but best is to get out. So we can use this body to get out, we don't want to take another one. So material body is like that, it's a bad bargain. You go shopping, oh I got cheated, I got a bad bargain, I thought it was a good bargain, but it was a bad bargain. <laughs> yeah. Okay, someone else can read? Who hasn't read yet? Is Gandharvika Radharani here? No? Who have we got here? What about Tamosa? Shall I read Maharaj? Who is this? Punita. Okay. Anita, can read. The material body and mind are bad, bad, bad bargains for the spiritual living entity. The living entity has actual functions in the living spiritual world, but this material world is dead. As long as the living spiritual sparks manipulate the dead lumps of matter, the dead world appears to be a living world. Actually, it is the living souls the part and parcels of the Supreme Living Being who move the world. The Diras have come to know all these facts by hearing them from superior authorities and have realized this knowledge by following the regulative principles. Um, Alright, so we're told more about the qualification of the Dira. What is the qualification? 
Where did he get the knowledge from? From the previous acharyas? Yes, right. Through the parampara, right? From the authorities. But it's not only just book knowledge. He's realized it. You know, there's theoretical knowledge and then there's application of that knowledge. The application of that knowledge is called realization. So it's not that they, we just only learn something from the book and then we remember and we repeat it. But we have to, we have to realize it. Just like we tell someone, you're not the body, right? You're not the body. But have we realized it? Have we actually understood it fully? Are we able to apply it in our life? Or are we still, do we overeat? Are we greedy? Do we get angry? Then it means we're still under the, the identifying with the body. So the dira, he knows, he's heard and he's understood it, he's properly understood it, he can apply the knowledge, right? And he can explain it also. Sometimes people say, well, I know, I know, I just can't tell you, I just can't put it into words. So they can't, they can't explain it. They say they know it, but they cannot explain it. But the, the dira not only knows it, he can explain it. And how did he, how did he learn to, un, he, he, how did he understand it? Because he followed the principles, he practiced the process, and he could understand how it, how it worked, how it affected him. Okay, so let's go ahead. Punita, would you like to read more? Yes, Maharaj. To follow the regulative principles, one must take shelter of a bona fide spiritual master. The transcendental message and regulative principles come down from the spiritual master to the disciple. Such knowledge does not come in the hazardous way of nascent education. One must become a dira only by submiss submissively hearing from a bona fide spiritual master. Arjuna, for example, became a dira by submissively hearing from Lord Krishna the personality of Godhead himself. Thus, the perfect disciple must be like Arjuna and the spiritual master must be as good as the Lord himself. This is the process of hearing Vidya knowledge from the dira, the undisturbed. Mm. Okay, so Prabhupada's making it very clear to us the knowledge has to come uh, not like the, the, the knowledge in the, in the university university you go you pay their pay money and you do the course and you memorize so many things and then you just repeat them and then okay you pass the exam but it, it's not exactly like that with spiritual knowledge we have to hear, and we have to hear very carefully, right? We have to hear, and then we have to be able to apply that knowledge also. So this is vidya, cultivating vidya is very special. It's not just go to the class, but we have to also practice, right? So regulative principles. We say, you, you don't just only go in here and you do something different. Just like you go, you hear in the class, don't smoke, smoking is bad, but the teacher smokes. That's, that's mundane education, it's like that. The, but transcendental knowledge, you have to hear about the regulative principles, you have to hear from somebody who also practices these principles. So Prabhupada said, Krishna is the perfect teacher and Arjuna is the perfect disciple. So this is the process, learning knowledge. Then we can also become, it's the Arjuna became Dira, we can also become Dira if we hear properly, if we get the proper education. Okay, we'll go ahead, someone else like to read? Oh, uh, Punita, you can just finish here. Yes, Maharaj, thank you. 
An adhira, one who has not undergone the training of adhira, cannot be an instructive leader. Modern politicians who pose themselves as dhiras are actually adhiras, and one cannot expect perfect knowledge from them. They are simply busy seeing to their own remuneration in dollars and cents. How then can they lead the mass of people to the right path of self-realization? Thus, one must hear submissively from a dhira in order to attain actual education. All right, thank you. So we have two kinds of people. There's the dhira and the adhira. The adhira. He never, he didn't get the real training. <laughs> so these people, they're compared to the, the politicians. They, they, come, they become the leaders of the nation and they're talking to the nation and guiding them, but they're not actually really, they're, they're not factually qualified. You, you cannot expect perfect knowledge from them. Maybe some of the things they'll see is okay, but some other things they'll have problems. And we see politicians, for some time they're successful, then they get problems because their knowledge is not perfect. Perfect knowledge has to come from a perfect person. So you get the perfect knowledge ultimately coming from Krishna. And so these other politicians, they're simply busy, they're more interested in the money. Although they, they often say, oh, I'm not interested in the money, but they're very rich people. <laughs> They've got so much money, they don't have to be interested in money. That's the position of many politicians. So. They cannot lead the, the people to the right path. So very important to hear from the qualified person to get actual education. So this is the point made in this verse, right? If you don't get the right person, then you won't get the proper result. You get different result. That's what the verse is about. One result by culturing knowledge and a different result by culture of nations. So it all depends who you hear from and who you go to. Uh, we want, did want to talk about one thing, that uh, becoming humble, be a perfect gentleman, give proper respect to others. It's very important for us when we study the Bhakti Shastri, that when we go uh, to the temple and so on, that we, we don't want to think that because we've studied Bhakti Shastri and there will be other people in the temple, maybe they haven't studied the Bhakti Shastri. You know, we had a lot of trouble sometimes when we began teaching the Bhakti Shastri. We found the students would go back to the temple and they would often complain that there would be problems, there would be conflicts between those who, who studied the Bhakti Shastri and those who didn't. Now, we have to give proper respect to all the devotees, especially devotees who've been in the movement longer than us. You see, we have a number of older devotees who've been in the movement a long time. They've done a lot of work, a lot of preaching. They may not have had time to go and do the Bhakti Shastri. So we shouldn't think that because we have done the Bhakti Shastri that we know more than them. We have to be very careful to give proper respect. Somebody is senior in, in different ways. How do we understand seniority? Someone may be senior in terms of their age, the, the physical body. And someone else may be senior in terms of their uh, qualification, education. Someone else may be senior in terms of their responsibility. Someone else may be senior in terms of their initiation. No, in all different ways we can understand somebody is seeing, but the, the, the main point is that just because we've done Bhakti Shastri, we shouldn't think that we know more or we're better qualified than those who haven't done the Bhakti Shastri. Because there are many devotees who haven't done Bhakti Shastri, but they have a very good knowledge of the scriptures and they have a lot of realization also. They've studied the scriptures. And they're also, they've, they've, they, have a lot, they have a lot of experience in the material world. 
So they know much more than some young devotee, you know, you get some young person, they come along and they do Bhakti Shastri and then they think, oh, what does, what does this other person know? I'm a Bhakti Shastri graduate, they don't know, I've done it, I've done, I've finished my Bhakti Shastri. And so, but someone else, they may not have done Bhakti Shastri, but they have a lot of knowledge, they have a lot of realization, they're very experienced in the world. And we need to learn from them, we need to be humble and deal with them very carefully. So this is some point which I want you to be aware of, that as devotees, you know, we have to show proper respect to other devotees. Don't think that just because we've studied the Bhakti Shastri we know everything. In Bhakti Shastri we're only giving an overview, we're not going very deep into things. We don't have time to go deep into it. You know, you, you could go on for a very long time. Just like here, this uh, text here, this mantra, mantra 10, you could say, I could take each item and we could go through each item. There's 18 items listed here. We could spend one class on each item. But we don't have time to do that. We just have to go through it and just try, try to get the essence, try to get the main focus, the main points, you see. But there is a lot we could say about each of these qualities. Becoming a perfect gentleman, learning to give proper respect to others, how to respect others. You know, it's, it's very important as devotees. We should have the nice behavior, we should show the good qualities so that people can appreciate under, and understand Krishna Consciousness. It said actually a devotee of Krishna should have all good qualities. He should, because he's surrendered to Krishna, so all the demigods are very pleased with him. And because he's surrendered to Krishna, all the demigods bestow their blessings on that person. So this is a very great advantage for a devotee. That if, if he surrendered to Krishna, all the demigods bestow their good qualities on that devotee and he should display, he should, he should, should reflect all the good qualities. Okay, are there any questions from anybody tonight? Any questions on this text here? Mantra 10, if we're hearing about, remember this was the Absolute and the Relative, right? The Absolute and the rel the Absolute meaning the Supreme Lord and the Relative, the living entities. So the wise are explaining to us the culture of knowledge. How do we cult culture knowledge? How, how does it say? We have to cult culture knowledge by hearing. It is mentioned here, iti sushruma diranam. We have to hear from the dira. Right? Just like in the Bhagavad Gita, the same thing is here. And as in Bhagavad Gita, who knows the verse, Bhagavad Gita? Krishna talks how to culture knowledge. Where is it told? Just try to learn the truth, Arjuna. Chapter 4, verse 34. Who knows the verse? I'm sure you all know it. You should know it. Tadvidi pranipatena. Right? Tadvidi pranipatena. Can you hear me? Hari yes, Maharaj. Yes, Maharaj. Yes. You're very quiet. I'm not hearing you. <laughs> I want to I want to hear your voice. I need yes, to... Maharaj. Okay. Yeah, so do you know that verse? Four thirty four? Yes. Yes, go ahead. Yes, tell, tell me. Let me hear you say. 
Oh, very nice. Do you know the translation? Try to learn through approaching the spiritual master. Mm, and then um, inquiring from, from him some is fully and render service to him. That is the meaning, you remember? Yes. <laughs> Such a soul has seen the truth and can impart knowledge unto us. So this is the same thing here. This is, it says here, the wise have explained this result. The wise have explained one result from the culture of knowledge and a different result from the culture of nations. So, in the verse it's mentioned, I heard from the sober, right? They have explained like this. The wise have explained. How could they explain? How could the dira, those who are dira, the sober person, the wise, they could explain this? They heard from a sober person. They heard from this, the higher authority. And they're passing on that knowledge to us also. So by hearing, it's always based on hearing. We have to hear very carefully. Lord Chaitanya gave great importance to hearing. When he talked to Ramananda Rai, Ramananda Rai was asked to talk about, to tell Lord Chaitanya what is the best process. So Lord Ramananda Roy said, first of all, Vanashra. Lord Chaitanya said, no, go on. And then he said after, and then offer the result of our work. And Lord Chaitanya said, go on. And then he said, give up all duties. Lord Chaitanya said, keep going. And then he talked about uh, Mishra Jnana Yoga, Jnana Mishra Yoga knowledge mixed with desire for liberation and then finally he came to bhakti yoga and the bhakti yoga was based on hearing stay in the association of devotees and hear you don't need to change your position you don't need to change whatever ashram you're in stay where you are and just hear about krishna in the association of devotees and in this way, you can conquer Krishna, although Krishna is unconquerable. He's conquered by the devotee who hears. So hearing, very important for us. And this is mentioned here, iti sushruma diranam, hearing from the sober, dira, sober person. Sober meaning, what does it mean? Remember? How, how one, who is undisturbed. one who is undisturbed, undisturbed by what? Why is he undisturbed? Understood the proper by holy methods. Undisturbed, by, he's undisturbed. What, what is he not disturbed? He's not disturbed by by material. Material thing. Yeah, he's, he's, one who can explain it as well. He's not disturbed by material affection, right? He's, he has no attachments to the material. And he can explain the knowledge also, what he's heard from the others. He's understood it. He's realized it. He has realized it. He knows how to use the knowledge. It's not just book knowledge. Book knowledge, you know, some, somebody is a good, a good scholar, they can read the book, they memorize it, they don't know anything, but they memorized everything in the book. But they cannot apply it. Some people study Bhakti Shastri, but they never chant Hare Krishna. They don't chant Japa, and sometimes they're still smoking cigarettes. 
and like that. And, but they studied Bhakti Shastri. <laughs> I'm a Bhakti Shastri graduate. But they didn't do anything. They don't follow properly. So it's important that we, we want to also realize this knowledge. That is the proper education. Okay? So very good. So the 18 qualities were there. Which one was the most important? Who remembers? 18 qualities. Which quality was the most important? Number 16. 16. 16. 16. Right, yeah. Not to become a devotee. Okay. Good. Okay, so, and, and the first items of knowledge were these one. The very first item of knowledge was? How is it described in Bhagavad Gita? Krishna is talking, he's saying, Amanitvam Adamvitvam. Be humble and without pride. Do you remember Lord Chaitanya also telling to be humble and not to be proud? And Shikshastikam? Where? Yes, yes. Where? Translation? Be humble and more tolerant than a tree. Let's join the street. Yeah. One should chant the holy name of the Lord in a humble state of mind, thinking oneself lower than a straw in the street, more tolerant than a tree. Then not finished yet. Devoid of all. Yes. Go ahead. Devoid of all. Devoid of. Yes. Devoid of all false prestige. And we should be ready to offer all respect to others. Very good. Yes. And ready to offer all respects to others. Amanina manadena. Kirtaniya Sadahari. This is real humility that we don't want respect for ourselves and we want we were we're ready to give respect to others. So this is very good. This is real education. The educated person. We want to try to cultivate that kind of education. Okay, very good. Thank you very much. We'll stop here tonight. We'll go on tomorrow. Text number 11. Okay. Hare Krishna. Hare Krishna Maharaj. Thank you very much Maharaj. Srila Prabhupada. Hare Krishna Maharaj. Thank you Maharaj. Srila Prabhupada. Thank you Maharaj. Thank you so much Maharaj. Thank you so much Maharaj. Thank you Prabhupada. Hare Krishna.